Today I'm so excited because I will bring you along and show you how much does it really cost eating kosher for a full week as Orthodox Jews living in Canada. I will shop at our local Walmart and at our next door grocery store. I will even share with you our full menu for Shabbat and weekdays for our 21 meals for our family of five. And I have a quick question for you. Do you think eating kosher will cost more than a non-kosher diet? We will answer this question and more in this video. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah Malka and on my channel I share all facets of my Orthodox Sephardic Jewish life as a full-time working mom with small kiddos. So please don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let me put on a pretty tehol and let's jump into it. Our first step will be to go to Walmart. I chose Walmart because it is a very common store in North America and many of you most probably have a Walmart nearby. I wanted to shop in a non-Jewish grocery store to show that we can find many kosher food in non-Jewish stores as well as to make this kosher shopping as relatable as possible. On a side note today, I will not shop for spices or condiments that we have plenty of at home, but it will be included in our final total at the end of the video. To give you a little peek into what we have planned on the menu for this week for our main meals, Sunday will be super fun with homemade pizza, salad, and fries. For Monday, it's going to be our super easy and delicious fish patties with salad. Tuesday will be our favorite one pot triple cheese mac and cheese. For Wednesday, it's going to be our famous standing barbecue chicken with grilled potatoes and caramelized onions. Thursday will be homemade pita with homemade falafel served with grilled veggies and salad for our weekly vegetarian night. For Friday night, of course for Shabbat, will be our usual menu with seven salads, Moroccan salmon, meatballs, grilled potatoes, and French beans with grilled onions. For Shabbat lunch, we will have some dafina and salads. Shabbat seuda shishit, or the third meal, will be the rest of the fish and the rest of the salads. Of course, I will make challah for Shabbat. I will also do chocolate cookies for treats in the week and a dessert for Shabbat, as well as, of course, the homemade pita. Our breakfast will be a rotation between yogurt, cereals, toasts, oat, waffles, and eggs. For our lunches, we're gonna take the rest of the previous day or sometimes a little soup cup or something like that. Now that we know what we're gonna eat and we have a full menu planned, let's go in the store with my two helpers and see what we're gonna find. The first thing we'll grab are the fruits and veggies. The mini cucumbers are $6 a bag and they make a great snack, especially with our homemade hummus. We take three bags and I'm sure they will all be eaten by the end of the week. Next stop, the bell peppers. Naomi is checking the bell peppers because often on bell peppers you can see insects or holes like this one and therefore for us even in the store we're going to inspect the food to make sure it is bug free or for any any signs of bugs not to be present. I take some avocados. They are about a dollar each, which is a good price for us. They are not ripe as my finger cannot leave an indentation, but after a few days at room temperature, it should be all good to go. I like taking them with their stem still attached. Apparently they have a more buttery taste. How do you choose your avocados? I take a pack of mini tomatoes because they are so versatile. We can add them to our salads, the falafel, and of course, many salads on Shabbat. I was so impressed by the quality of these beets. They are $3 for four large beets. I like to buy them in bunch like this and not in a bag. I find that they are always fresher and tastier when we take them like that. Next, we have some organic carrots. I take organic carrots because they are almost the same price as regular carrots here. And after that, I take some salads. Usually the salads at Walmart are not kosher, as you can see here. And often because they are not kosher, they are not checked for bugs, 
Even when you can read on the box prélavé or pre-washed, it does not mean that it is bug-free. On the contrary, they are often very infested with bugs. But here you can see on this salad mix, what's interesting about this salad is that it is certified Star K kosher, but that does not mean that there will be no bugs in the salad. It simply means that there are no extra ingredients that are against kosher laws, but in no way does it guarantee it is bug-free. And this is why I'm not gonna take it because I'm not sure it is bug-free. We need green beans as a side dish for the meatballs, and we also use them to make our green bean salad for Shabbat. I thought at first to take the loose green beans, but when I look at the quality, it is really not what I'm looking for. So I will take the bagged green beans. I understand the first green beans were more affordable than the bagged one, but the quality and the freshness of the bagged green beans seems to be much better. We also wanted to take some kohlrabi, celery root, and fennel for our Shabbat salads, but they had none of them in the store, so we will have to get them in the next store. We love taking mini potatoes and we will take a few bags because we're going to use them for the barbecue chicken as well as for the Shabbat Dafina. We use many bags during the week and Shabbat because the children love them and we are blessed to receive guests on Shabbat who also love our mini potatoes. When I choose our mini potatoes, I make sure that they are not too small, not too large. I take the medium size. These are the perfect size to peel them for a dafina and also to make our grilled baby potatoes. We already have apples and oranges at home, but Leah will take a few oranges for our famous fennel and orange salad for Shabbat. And of course, we will leave all the links to the recipes and videos in the description box below, so you're able to watch them after this one. We feel so blessed because our local Walmart has a kosher meat section. Today I'm looking for a whole chicken to make our barbecue chicken, but unfortunately for whatever reason, as it happened so many times in the past, it seems that yet again I will not be able to buy my chicken here. But after verifying every single chicken, I was able to find, thank God, one chicken, and of course it was the last one that we looked at, that was fully sealed. This large chicken is $14 Canadian, which is a good price for us, and I am eager to see if we got a good deal here, or we should have waited for the next door. I'm curious to know, do you think that the chicken will be more expensive or less expensive in the next door? Please let me know in the comments below. Next, we are on the lookout for breadcrumbs for the meatballs. Usually there are many companies that produce brand name breadcrumbs that are kosher, but today unfortunately I could not find any in the regular breadcrumb section, so we took this one from the international section. We will also take some canned goods at this point. We start with canned tuna, for, of course, our fish patties. We're gonna take five so we can have leftovers for lunch. The children absolutely love Heart of Palm. They are at an extraordinary low price, four for six dollars. So Naomi will take four cans and we'll use them as it is with dressing for one of our Shabbat salad. And we'll also do a mix of avocado and Heart of Palm to make another salad for Shabbat and perhaps for the week as well. As you can see, we wanted to have some corn, but every can of corn I looked at was not kosher. It is a rarity, as usually I will find at least two or three different brands that are kosher, but today, none of them were. Next stop, I take a big bag of dried chickpeas to make our hummus, our falafel, as well as to add them in our dafina. While I often rely on canned chickpeas to make my life in the kitchen easier, I still prefer the final product when I use dry chickpeas. I find that they are creamier, meatier, and richer in my opinion. What do you think? Do you go for the canned chickpeas or the dry chickpeas? Let me know in the comments below. I also took a bag of parboiled rice. It is a rice that is pre-cooked and it is the best one for the dafina. Because on Tuesday we will have our one pot pasta delight, Leah will take two boxes of bows to have left over for our lunches. 
Our son absolutely loves eating his fish patties with mustard, so we're gonna take him a bottle of French mustard. While we are in the aisle of all the tomato sauces, Leah will go and take one large can of whole tomatoes to make our chukchuka or salad cuite for Shabbat. To make the chalot, the pitot, the cookies, and the dessert for Shabbat, we will need some flour. Naomi takes care of the all-purpose flour, which is about $5 for five pounds, and Leah will take care of the bread flour, which is high gluten content flour, to give the most delicious and fluffy challah, and it is a bit more expensive at about $6 per bag. Just on a side note, in our What is Kosher Food video, we talked about the issue of gelatin that usually comes from pork nowadays. And here is another example of a kosher gelatin, which is derived from fish, and no, we do not taste the fish when we eat these marshmallows. As a general rule, we prefer to avoid processed food, but we also want to show our children, like many things in life, everything can be good in moderation. Therefore, we take one not-so-healthy option for one of our meals, and this week we take some fries. As you can see, they are certified kosher by OU, and they are two for $7. Up next, we are looking for eggs. And as you can see, none can be found. I don't know about you, but it happened many times in the past few months where we had no eggs available and or they were very expensive, reaching six to eight dollars per dozen, which is a steep contrast to our usual three dollars per dozen we used to pay just a few months ago. Hopefully we will find some eggs in the other store. The next stop is a must because my helpers were so good today and they always love to browse the toy section even if we do not buy often new toys. Naomi found the cutest cash register and Leia absolutely loves to dress up her dolls. She found a few things but in the end we did not take anything and they are absolutely okay with it because they know that it's not because we like something that we need to buy it right away. I also think that this is a wonderful life skill to control oneself and to avoid buying on impulse, which is definitely something I'm working on. On our way to the cash, my heart melted when I saw our daughters holding hands and I absolutely pray to God they will always be best friends and stay close all their life. It is one of the greatest strengths, in my opinion, to form a close knitted family unit. What do you think? Is it important for you, for your children and family to be strongly united? I would love to know. After going to the cache, and oh my goodness, Look at this line to go to the cash. In this Walmart, they removed all cashiers and we have the self-checkout. And if you have been here for a while, you know that self-checkout and me are frenemies. Thank God our girls are there and they will take care of the scanning. I will take care of the bagging and the paying. At this point, I am so curious to know. Did you change your mind? Do you still think the same way you thought at the beginning of the video? Perhaps you think that kosher food will cost more or maybe less or the same amount? Please write in the comments the number 14, which is the timestamp, to let me know what do you think. Did it change? Is it the same? I cannot wait to compare your answer from this point and at the end of the video when we will really share with you how much does it really cost to feed a family of five of Orthodox Jews for a full week keeping kosher. <laughs> Because we are missing a few of our ingredients for our weekly kosher meal prep, let's go to a grocery store called IGA. It is the equivalent of Kroger in the USA or Hannaford if you are from the East Coast. We'll take what we're missing, some coleslaw for the falafel, fish patties, as well as for a salad for Shabbat. This one is from Bodek and has been checked and it is bug free. And this is important because as you already know, as Orthodox Jews, we do not eat bugs. It is part of our kosher laws. I always check to see when is the expiration date for the salads and often end up taking the one in the back. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. 
here we have the kohlrabi, the fennel, and a little tip here when you choose a fennel is to smell the hair of the fennel and if it is fragrant, you're going to have a delicious fennel. We take some mushrooms, we will put them in the eggs for breakfast. These are not super appetizing, but this one looks much fresher. You see that the head of the mushroom is completely closed, which is another telltale sign that most probably there will be no insect in the mushroom. I get our famous celery root. We use it as one of the salads for Shabbat. It is one of our family's favorite. It is called remoulade in French, but I'm curious to know, how do you use your celery root or do you even use celery root altogether? Next stop, the fish section. I'm going to take a very large piece of salmon. I will prepare it not only for Friday night, but also for Seudesh Shishit, and we will still have some left for the week. We are now in the kosher meat section, which is again a blessing. And here is the answer to our question. For the same size chicken, it is about 40% more here. So yay for Walmart. I take the meat for Shabbat. First will be de jarret with bones for the dafina. And the second stop will be minced meat for our boulette or meatballs. We also take two containers of milk that I will use in my coffee and the children will use in their cereals. We also took 10 yogurts for the week as snacks and as part of the breakfast. Naomi chose this massive bag of cheese that we will use for the pasta as well as the pizza. This bag will last us for about a month. I also take a bag of broccoli and this is fully bug free, which is a blessing because it would not be possible for us to take fresh broccoli florets as they are highly infested even after soaking and washing as we have previously shared with you in our video on how we keep kosher and how we make sure that there are no bugs in our food. Now we're holding our breath and we are looking for eggs and thank God Leah found this pack of 30 eggs for $9, which is an overall good price. We will include them in our bread, in our treats, as well as breakfast and our dafina. Next stop, the bread to make toast and sandwiches for the morning, as well as sandwiches for our lunches. I absolutely love seeing our Naomi skipping just because she's happy to be alive. And I have to ask myself, when was the last time I was just skipping out of pure joy like her? Finally, we arrive at the cache and Leah took care of everything. She took a few treats for her and the other children, including some soup cups and fancy yogurts. And finally, here is the total at IGA. $128.14 plus what we paid at Walmart, which is $158.13 for a grand total of $286.27, which includes our 15% taxes here where we live. Our grand total is equivalent to 215 American dollars or 197 euros to feed our family of five for a full week, including all 21 well-balanced meals, as well as our Royal Shabbat meals. And if you think, wow, this is so expensive. Well, here in Canada, to feed a family of four per week is around 339 Canadian dollars as per our government's latest studies. And according to the latest USDA estimates, it costs around 344 American dollars, so around 455 Canadian dollars a week to feed an average family of five. So in a nutshell, keeping kosher does not cost way more than eating a non-kosher diet, contrary to popular beliefs. And I still stay below national averages, whether in the US or Canada, if I add like $30 of spices, oil, and whatever else extra I added during the week in our menu. And my tips and tricks to not overspend are plan your meals, meal prep, eat home cooked meals as much as possible, and buy as much as possible ingredients in their simplest form, aka as less processed as possible. I would love to know, 
Were you surprised about the final bill? Did you imagine it was going to be higher than that? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. And please know that in my book, you are my essential to have a good week. If you're here until the end, please write in the comments, I love shopping. So I know I was not alone. And as a gentle reminder, if nobody told you today, know that you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe. Stay blessed and don't forget to from it up. In Greek fountains or lay lazy in bed with your head on my chest. I hope you don't mind if I say that I love you.